Hey, it's Kate here at Marvelous Videos. Today we look at Attraction 2017, The Humanoid Alien Explained. Hollywood might have you believing that all alien invasions, supernatural attacks, and supervillain assaults take place in the US. However, I guess the aliens like a change of air from time to time. And what better place to go than the OG country that the US was involved in a cold war with? Yes sir, I am talking about Russia here. 2017's Attraction and 2020's Invasion are Russian movies, directed by Fyodor Bondarchuk. They're an exciting blend of science fiction and action, with some slice-of-life romance. Attraction stars Irina Starshenbaum, Alexander Petrov, Oleg Menshikov, and Rino Mukhamitov, while Sergei Gamash joins the cast in its sequel. What you might not know is that director Bondarchuk has presented the movie as some sort of a social allegory, because it was inspired by the 2013 Borilyovo riots, where a 25-year-old Russian man was allegedly killed by a migrant from Central Asia. The Russian government then put a price on the head of the perpetrator, and of course, the people converged on him. You might already be familiar with science fiction romances. A human falls in love with a robot or an alien. Alexa, play E.T. by Katy Perry featuring Kanye West. Attraction and Invasion take a very similar route, but if you think it's some sort of plain old plot, think again. I am here to tell you how these movies are actually not your plain old cookie cutter sci-fi, and that is why we have this video. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. The love story of a regular human and a hyper-advanced alien. The first movie attraction introduces high school student Yulia. She has a best friend, a boyfriend named Artyom, and her father Colonel Valentin Lebedev is in charge of the military operation in Russia. One day, a spaceship nears Earth's orbit and infiltrates it. The military defense in Russia detects it and thinks of it as a NATO spacecraft. They try to stop it with missiles causing it to crash on Earth and destroying everything in its way. Yulia's best friend dies in the process. The colonel goes near the spaceship and comes face to face with an alien that looks like a robot. After interrogating it, the colonel realizes that it's not here to fight. It just wants to fix its spaceship and leave. This is followed by a nationwide curfew in Russia. Yulia is resentful towards the alien because her best friend died. So she steals her dad's gun and teams up with Artyom's gang to get the alien. At night, they go to the spot where the alien allegedly was and found some weird alien technology. Yulia comes face to face with the alien while in her best friend's room and slips off the debris, but the thing saves her. Artyom and the others see this and attack the alien to save her. The alien falls off several stories and others rush downstairs. They realize that it's just armor, but Artyom gets his hands on some blood. Yulia looks sideways and sees someone, but doesn't say anything out of fear. They retrieve the armor to prevent the army patrols from finding them and evacuate the place. On another day, she sneaks into the crash site and finds the severely wounded alien. She brings him home and contacts her nerdy friend Google, asking him for tips to salvage the situation. She donates her blood to help him survive. While examining his body, she notices a wristband which wraps itself around her. Later, Yulia finds out that the wristband can manipulate water. She's a waterbender now. The alien looks exactly like a human and speaks Russian. Okay, but how? Anyway, his name is Harkon, and he tells Yulia that he's looking for a device called Shilk, because that's what lets him travel through space safely, without destroying his body. Meanwhile, scientists at the military facility are examining the Shilk which was retrieved by Artyom's gang, and they realize that the water has been behaving weirdly around it. This is because Harkon's spaceship was using the water to fix itself. Harkon goes out to look for the Shilk, but his awkward behavior makes the police mistake him for a druggie, and he is sent to the cops for interrogation. Artyom and his friend experiment on the alien armor, and grasp that it has some unique properties. They try to inform Colonel Lebedev about it, but are stopped in the middle of the road due to a riot for water, as the spaceship was absorbing everything. They provoke the crowd into rioting even more and Artyom is finally stopped thanks to a policeman who hits him with a baton. He is then taken to the police station where Harkon is already present. Yulia goes to the station to get the Shilk from her father, 
and makes up a story about being pregnant with Harkon's child to get him out of there. Archam also forgets to tell the Colonel about the armour. She helps Harkon disguise himself as a scientist, and he uses the guys to infiltrate the room and take the Shilk from the container. After a while, the people in the room comprehend that it had been infiltrated and send out a red alert. Yulia and Harkon evacuate the place and go back to her house. They see on TV that they were wanted as criminals. Yulia then takes Harkon to a club because the military wouldn't check the club for a situation like this. The both of them dance, and through a simulation Harkon tells her the truth about his arrival and his home planet. He also tells her that if her military tried to force themselves onto the ship, it would destroy itself and with that, everything around its radius. Artyom's friend spots the two of them together and informs him about it. He calls her and she confesses her feelings for Harkon, so Artyom and his friend charge at Harkon. Harkon fights back and Artyom's friend shoots him but the bullet hits his friend Ruslan instead. Devastated, Artyom makes his news go viral, to form a group and attack the spaceship. The group breaks through a police barricade and suited armors come out to fight the mob. Yulia and Harkon are in an armored car, trying to return the Shilk to the ship while evading Archeom who gets into Harkon's suit and attacks him. However, Harkon takes Archeom down. Enraged, he uses a rifle to shoot the both of them. Colonel Lebedev sees his daughter at death's door. However, the suits state that their extraterrestrial technology can save her. The Colonel enters the ship with Harkon and a dying Yulia, while the ship uses water to heal her. He interrogates the ship which talks about Harkon's mission to observe Earth and its war-torn history. However, Yulia's love has changed their minds about the planet's ruthlessness. In the end, everyone goes back to their daily lives, and Harkon leaves in his spaceship, Artyom is rested. The sequel invasion takes place two years after the events of Attraction. Russia has strengthened their defences by a lot to handle further alien invasions, and Colonel Lebedev is at the helm of it all. Some pod-like technology is launched from Harkon's ship from Attraction, and it enters the Earth's stratosphere, crashing into a water body in Russia. Yulia is now in college and is accompanied by a bodyguard all the time. The Colonel picks her up and takes her to a top secret location. When Yulia reaches there, she sees that the defense was conducting experiments on the alien armor from attraction. However, that was not the reason why Lebedev had brought Yulia. The military conducts experiments on Yulia to test her water controlling bracelet. She's made to answer questions about Artyom shooting her and Harkon to monitor the water's reaction to her negative emotions. To make things worse, Artyom is brought out of his cell to agitate her. Yulia reacts negatively to it and the water starts behaving abnormally. Things get out of control and the colonel retrieves her. He assigns a new guard, Ivan, to protect her. One night while at a bar, Yulia suddenly sees Harkon. He gets into a fight with Ivan and takes Yulia away. He then contacts his spaceship, which is even cooler and more high tech now, and can hack into any earthly electronic device. They hack into a nearby BMW and escape. Ivan is unable to catch up and finds out that Harkon is back. Harkon and Yulia go to a small house in the woods, where Harkon is trying to live as a human and has a job. Turns out that the pod in the beginning was Harkon's, and he was in space for only a week while that was two years on Earth. In space, a much bigger spaceship narrows in on Harkon's and integrates it into itself. Yulia tells her dad over call that she is happy wherever she is. The cull then asks his team to track down her location, but not take any violent action. The military finds her and Lebedev orders them to not fire, but the audio frequencies get distorted into asking them to kill Yulia and Harkon. This happens because the bigger ship, Ra, makes Harkon's ship, Sol, hack into the systems and send the message. The military opens fire on Yulia and Harkon, and they escape into his pod, but she gets shot again. Meanwhile, Artyom escapes while being transferred and gets into Harkon's old suit. He then chases Harkon's pod, which is being chased by choppers, and offers them help. Harkon goes to get a lot of water to heal Yulia. He tells Artyom about Ra's objective to kill Yulia, because she had the bracelet and they did not want their technology to reach Earth. Ra makes a fake video of Yulia speaking against the military for stealing alien technology, and makes it go viral. Everyone around Russia starts getting fake phone calls, ordering them to kill Yulia to save their family. 
Harkon heals Yulia with water and tells Arteon that her body is changing from that of a human. He also tells him that Ra, being an AI, has no personal objective and instead works on a program protocol, according to which Yulia is a threat that has to be exterminated for having the bracelet. The military switches to analog gear after realising that the attack is a cyber one. Artyom and Google team up to take Harkon down to save themselves. They take Harkon to the Colonel who is adamant on attacking Ra, even though Harkon tells him that Ra will destroy them easily. Ivan tells Yulia that he will kill her if something happens to his son. The fake call threats, remember? While Artyom tells Harkon that he still loves Yulia. The Russian defence launches missiles at the Ra, and it hits the mark. They think that they have destroyed it. Meanwhile, the citizens are rioting on the streets to have Yulia killed, but Ivan protects her. Nonetheless, he resigned right after that. Ra then contacts Harkon and asks him to kill Yulia and return his home planet. The military realises that they failed to exterminate it. Harkon denies, thus the ship comes to Earth and uses up all the water around it. Everything within the ship's 3 km radius gets overwhelmed by water. Harkon lets Artyom and Yulia escape and meets up with the Colonel to tell him his plan of action. Harkon makes a plan to use his pod to infiltrate the Ra, using the water pressure for speed, ultimately destroying the Ra with the force of water. But this was a suicide mission. Yulia's helicopter crashes and she understands that the only way to fix the situation is if she dies so she tells the crowd that she is Yulia. Artyom tries to protect her, but Ivan, thinking that she killed his son, shoots her. Artyom takes a bullet instead and dies. She uses her bracelet to make tornadoes in the water and begins to crush the Ra. The military fires at it from above and they ultimately destroy it. Harkon is saved as well. A few days later, the colonel fakes Yulia's death to save her from the wrath of the citizens while she leaves with Harkon for his home planet. Review Attraction was received very well by the critics. Compared to that, Invasion did not make that great of an impact. However, from a personal point of view, I think that both sci-fi films were brilliant. As we've said before, it's not a cookie-cut sci-fi alien plot, and the romantic elements do not feel forced or rushed at all. The characters are interesting and the antagonisation of the protagonist by the Russian citizens takes the movies to another level. This is where it ties up to the Burilyovo riots, where the people revolted against an immigrant, in this case Harkon, followed by Yulia who was gradually turning into an alien due to her bracelet. Artyom also has a redemption arc which adds more depth to his character. One of the standout parts of the movies would definitely be the VFX. The alien ship, the scenes involving the water and the armoured robots were executed brilliantly and meshed in with realistic surroundings seamlessly. We do wonder what Harkon and Yulia spoke about though. Pretty sure that they have very different likes and dislikes. It would be a bummer if they broke up while she is away from her planet. Raise the interceptors, ready the missiles and inform emergency situations ministry. They should also be ready to give commands. Humanoid alien explored. Harkon is an alien who comes from a technologically advanced planet that is far superior to Earth. However, instead of looking like an extraterrestrial species altogether, he looks just like humans. Which is weird, considering that the climate, temperature and gravitational pull of a different planet would be completely divergent, but hey, this is fiction. He lands on Earth after his spaceship gets damaged by a meteor shower while travelling through the solar system. He is also genetically superior as pointed out by Google when Harkon picks up a few Russian words from Google and Yulia's conversation and begins to speak in Russian himself. He still doesn't get the quirks of the language though. He also acts quite strange in the beginning, especially when he sees water at the garage where he had his first interaction with Yulia and Google. He also happens to be quite straightforward, as is seen when Google tells him that Yulia was grateful to Harkon for having saved her and he should return the favour. However, Harkon points out that Yulia was visibly flustered because she had saved the enemy and wondered if she was in trouble, so a thank you would not make things okay for her. Being genetically superior and coming from a separate planet did not make him robotic or heartless though. This is a love story after all. As Harkon falls in love with Yulia, he begins to prioritise her over everything else, 
going the extra mile by putting his life and safety on the line for her. She, of course, does the same for him. In Invasion, when the Ra asked him to kill her and return to his planet, he denied, and instead volunteered to execute a plan that would cause him to die while defeating the Ra. With this, Harkon became the ultimate symbol of self-sacrifice. What was Harkon's home planet like? During the scene in Attraction where Yulia takes Harkon to a club, he tells her about his home planet. He explains how he had no intentions of landing on Earth, and it was an accident due to the meteor shower that caused a system failure in his ship. He tells her about the dangers of the military trying to destroy or infiltrate the ship because the AI, Sol, would destroy the ship and with it, everything around it. This is because the technology in Harkon's home planet is highly advanced and they did not want it to fall into the hands of others. Neither did they take technology from anyone and nor did they share. This is also what sets Invasion into motion as Ra wants Yulia killed for possessing Harkon's bracelet. What is Harkon's spaceship like? The spaceship Harkon travels in looks like a huge eye and has elliptical wheels orbiting around it like Saturn, but much more hardcore. The ship is controlled by an AI called Sol and it is ridiculously advanced. Its upgrades get even better in the sequel Invasion, where it learns the algorithm of Earth's technology and can now hack into any device. A horribly powerful technology if it fell into the wrong hands, but once again, humans cannot infiltrate it, so the system is quite foolproof. Are there any plot holes in the movies? Attraction 2017 has some very obvious plot holes. It is understandable that they exist for the sake of moving the plot forward, but it's still an interesting thing to pick up on. After the arrival of the spaceship, a curfew is imposed all over Russia. However, Yulia's school remains open, which is weird. This is also apparent in the scene where Yulia takes Harkon to the club. How is a club functioning during a nationwide curfew? Maybe it was illegally open and that's why Yulia took Harkon there, hoping that the military would not come because they weren't aware of its open hours. Another glaring plot hole becomes apparent during the scene where Yulia gives Harkon blood to save him. Normally you cannot donate blood just like that. The blood type needs to match. We reckon aliens out there don't have blood types similar to that of humans, or maybe Yulia's blood type is O positive. It's called a universal donor after all. Maybe people with this blood type can donate to any species in the universe. Another not so obvious one would be Yulia's reaction to the death of her best friend Svetlana. She initially begins to take action against Harkon because she was devastated after Svetlana's death and wanted to do right by her. However, as the movie progressed, it felt like she had completely forgotten her initial objective and does not even mention it ever again. Having broken the meme stereotype of aliens only attacking the USA, Bondchuk has rounded attraction and invasion to be brilliant movies that are not only entertaining for a casual watch but have substantial depth and substance, be it with a reference to the performance of the actors, the VFX, the extraterrestrial elements, or the emotional value. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe.